situation i think and uh, i saw you had a duo with alexander hawkins yes yes and, yes, uh, yes he's one of my favorite players and i did one talk like this with him and we chatted like for two hours almost then oh really well that's nice so yeah 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 he is he uh, like this is he's an amazing person and also of course a a, 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 a like a wonderful player anyways and, how did and this so yeah um, well, we met actually at the Berliner Jazz Fest, uh, I think, uh, three years ago or something, okay. maybe four years ago. Uh, no, three years ago. Right. And so we were amazed by each other's music. Anyway, we just talked, actually. And then, um, I don't know if you remember, I think it was uh, 2000 and, what was it, 19? Wait, no, now we have 20. Yeah, yeah it was, um, he, he um, released his solo recording. Mm. And I'm on the same label and I heard yeah. it and I was like, what is this? This is amazing. And I knew, of course, you know, his music kind of, but like the solo recording, just like I was raving on it. It's an amazing actually, yeah. It be, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know about this. So, um, so I was talking to my intact uh, people about something completely different, like about, oh, yeah, yeah, that was about the, the, um, the trio CD uh, or kind of quartet CD we were releasing. And, and I dropped it that, that I really loved uh, Alexander's CD. That was really oh. like the recording was great. And we were raving about that. And at some point uh, after that, um, because um, intact also does a festival, Uno, Unerhört Festival in yeah. Zurich. And so they kind of asked us, so you, uh, you guys yeah. want to do a duo? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we did that, I think that was November 2019. And so we did rehearsing and, and the performance. And after that, it, it became pretty clear that we, sh you know, we should work together. And, and so wow. that, that led to the recording, which was planned uh, before this whole virus situation and and we were lucky to actually so we could we could because in 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 germany it was um the situation was kind of uh well kind of better in september and mm -hmm. and um october so we could actually play and then do the recording and then we played again at the festival so yeah that was kind of like our window our corridor where we could just yeah. you know, could do the music should I actually like I uh, I have the the I I kind of didn't because I did had yesterday I had a Zoom meeting also and I can. It's okay. You you can float in space. It's okay. Okay. Well, that's me. <laughs> you're you're gonna be the, you're gonna be the first one who's floating in space. So. <laughs> well, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, but um, is it gonna be a new album? Like also you guys? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have we have lots and lots of material. And actually, I kind of we, we were. Uh, I tried to listen to it, but every time I, I kind of uh, uh, um, I kind of sit down and then I go like, oh man, I have to decide. I don't want to decide. Yeah. And then I just bail out. So, yeah. but yeah, we, there's going to be a new album in um, 2021, obviously. Super. Uh, in the, uh, in, uh, I think it's going to come out sort of September-ish. Yeah. Okay, so, super. Wow. Yeah, and, and the material, it was, it, it is such a pleasure working with this dude. He's like, he's just the best. He's, I mean, you know, already because it, you did a talk. So, um, like, he, I, I really love that we, we, you know, we can talk about music and music related mm -hmm. things and about, of course, diversity and, and, you know, Black Lives Matter, like all the, the things, how it actually does relate to jazz yeah. or our music, our history. How do we do this in, in Europe? You know, like, um, um, so, so that's, that's really important. And I love that, that we can, we, we chat about it and rave about it all the time. And also about, of course, about music and like yeah. composers and yada, yada, yada. And, and he's the kind of person, which I really, I, I love that, that he, uh, normally I'm the one who's, who's like, uh, what's the break? I don't even know. And, but, but like Alexander 
even like more like that. So I have to take care of my, oh my God, I think I have to eat. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so, and, and, and we just go on and on. And I remember the recording. That's why we have so much material oh, because we just went like, okay, not even talking about doing another one, just like do another one, like one, two. Uh, so Is it like uh, true composed also or like uh, improvised only or? It's both. It's both. Oh, we do, like his compositions, my compositions, oh. and some improvisation, which is, you know, it's super hard to decide. So yeah. and I need some time. And by now, like everybody, I'm like uh, exhausted because of the situation. Yeah. And so I, I that's that, that's my my thing. I want to do Christmas, uh, kind of around Christmas when I have, you know, like uh, like my brain is back to you know normal yeah. thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that, that's quite cool. I mean, but the, you mentioned Intact, right? And uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you, how did the connection with Intact first start? Because Intact for me is like right now the probably one of the best labels out there for modern jazz. Let's put it. And uh, when does this story begin with them? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I hear you, and I just feel the same. Those are like, I mean, of course, it's it's like my family. But, but I, I love them since I actually kind of, well, kind of was aware about, um, was aware of, of like contemporary jazz, right? So yeah. because the, the most important recordings are, were and are on Intact. And I think it was the quintet. Uh, I, I was looking um, the New York uh, um, Five uh, with, mm -hmm. with Florian Weber and Tyshawn and Christo Demi and Raf Alessi. So recorded that one in, in New York and I was looking for a label because um, my my uh, last recordings were on Enya. It wasn't, you know, that kind of crumbled, whatever. And and so I was I was kind of searching and looking for a new label. And I think I just even, I kind of mailed them and then they, they went, Patrick went like, yeah, so, you know, send us some recordings. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I, I can do that because I have the, so I, I, I um, just sent them oh, some, some sound and they went like, yeah, let's do this. And I was like, oh, yes. Because <laughs> that's, yeah, I mean, just what, what you said, it's, it's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a real pleasure and privilege also be on that, on that label. And also I feel the same, um, that most of the music actually I'm listening to is on yeah. their label now. Yeah. So that's really, it's really great. And, and, and then, you know, then, then, then the live recording came along and then the, the, uh, that was in, in the, the Berlin Jazz Fest yeah. uh, with Tyshawn and Chris, the trio. And then we, we that was kind of uh, close scheduled to the other recording with um, Jonathan Gerald and and uh, yeah so and and Chris, that's yeah. the fourth one yeah yeah amazing yeah amazing job but uh, you, you mentioned the, the, I wanted to ask you like you, you mentioned this is the music that you listen to basically is on impact now uh, <laughs> but uh, when I want to go really back like. Uh, who were mm -hmm. the guys who inspired you for jazz? Let's say, you, you know, you're a saxophone player and a composer. And uh, who were the first saxophonists from jazz that blew your mind? Do you remember, like, the first record? I know my first record, which blew my mind. It was, like, Pat Metheny Group. Like, of course, when you're a teenager, it's accessible. And Ralph mm -hmm. Downer. But uh, do you remember some of the stuff that blew your mind in the beginning? Yes, I remember exactly. Because um, I was kind of, you know, playing and fooling around with a, with a friend of mine. He was a bass player and I didn't know anything about like we were like, I had, he had like some real book stuff and, and he went like, yeah, let's play this. And I didn't know anything about like improvisation or something. And then we were just, you know, I was just playing, kind of trying to, to get by. And then he was, he just gave me um, a record, a culture recording live. And this oh. was like, that's the... I didn't, I, I just yeah. didn't, <laughs> that was, um, I never heard anything like that, like anything at all. And, and the sheer power of, of, of everything actually, yeah. I mean, it must have been a shitty sound, but I, I didn't even care. I didn't like, this was like this, this spirituality and this power yeah. and, and this, um, I, that this artistry, like everything blew me away and, and I can, actually pretty much say this was the recording which actually hooked me on jazz because then mm. you know then 
you go like, oh, there's more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. But that was, I mean, till now, um, Carlton is one of my all-time favorites go-to, I have to say. Because, of course, as you said, um, sometimes, like the very first one is, of course, this, you, you love this the most because you, yeah. that, like, this is, this is, this opened the world, like, of jazz for me. So I didn't, you know, I was, yeah. I was listening to, like, normal kind of music before that and and uh, you know what what teenagers do but then there was like this whole world with this incredibly inventive sounds and this yeah. this kind of almost mission you know uh, and i uh, that was <laughs> that yeah. was, my, that was uh, since then i'm hooked <laughs> yeah it's, 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 same with me i i heard ornette coleman for the first time then like after being in jazz and it's I was just like <laughs> yeah went into yeah. the kind of you know this more open music Eric Dolphy and Albert Taylor and all these guys and but yeah. like also like transcribed lots of stuff or like how, how did you learn I mean did you study jazz afterwards or yes I did I did I was I was uh, in the Falkland Hochschule and so so of course I did transcribe uh, lots and lots of, of you know sorry and and I was I was and and sometimes am still um, playing with you know with, with certain oh, okay. recordings just because I I love it sometimes yeah. with yeah. melodies like trio or something yeah. or I don't know like like you know just just to to kind of um not because uh, at some point you transcribed kind of uh, uh your solely and then yeah. and then i was interested in some specific stuff and then or Steve lehman i do i do like what come on yeah. man and i go like mm, let's see yeah. what it <laughs> so and and rudresh also so yeah. um, i hear Steve, but, Steve, yeah. and you're playing a little bit yeah, definitely. yeah so you just go like wait a minute what and and i i, I mean i love this his recordings anyway uh, and, and yeah. the dude is also like uh, super great so um so nowadays uh, though those are more like bits and pieces pieces where i kind of you know just uh, yeah. try to um check out things and but yeah of course i did my share of 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 transcribing and you know deploying with the with the dudes mostly dudes not so much the dads but yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that's yeah. quite good <laughs> but uh, you, you mentioned all these new york guys right i mean uh when did the story with new york happen for you like because you know we, we i've played with many guys that you play with also and it's I know my first New York experience was just, it blew my mind, of course, you know, I'd, my, my first recording in New York was a trio I did with Tom Rainey, Tony Malaby and Mark Elias, yes. and we did wow. it in two hours, and, <laughs> you know, I was shocked because that's how, it, you know, it's like, open loose trio, I just, I didn't know that they were open loose trio, they just like, doo -doo -doo -doo. everything was first takes, amazing, but I wanted to ask you, yeah. how was like your first New York experience and when did this happen? Well, actually, um, the thing is that, for instance, with Taishan, uh, I knew him in Germany already. So we met at a festival in Germany, um, which, which kind of um, took place like I, I heard him uh, with Michelle Grosswoman. <clears throat> that was also his first yeah. tour. And I was like, I, we were playing... Uh, the, uh, with, I was playing with my quartet and, and with my German quartet and he was playing with Michelle and I was I was like yeah. what? I, I, re I couldn't believe what this person uh, did on the drums and like musically like everything it blew me literally away and and um, and then I, I remember like taking my CD and I was really like, I was like, I, I, I can't just go to him and just go like, Ugh. and then uh, somebody from the festival went with me and was like, yeah, okay, come on. Like, I'm, I'm going to help you. And then yeah. he was like, yeah, I want to, you know, introduce this to Jenica. She was playing and, and fashion was super, super sweet. And I was like, yeah, I loved your performance yeah, in the CD. <laughs> it was super awkward because I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, I was kind of young and then, and then, Sort of like what, like today it's it's different. You go yeah, like sure. oh, hi, man, blah, 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 blah. I, mean, yeah. I didn't know him like at all, and it, I felt felt it's super awkward just to give him. But I just wanted I don't know like you know just, just yeah. um, get get to know him and and actually and he answered I think two or three days or maybe a week later that I, I mean he wrote me an email that was so oh. sweet 
like yeah, yeah, uh, I like your music, yada yada yada, and blah blah blah. blah we'll play, we'll play it tomorrow. We we we'll, we'll love to play. Duh, duh, duh. And then we um, every time he was in 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 Germany, uh, we didn't play there yet. But then I kind of tried to catch his performances and yeah. hang out and and so on. And then um, it was again in Germany because I was the first improviser in residence in Mers. Mers huge festival, yada yada yada, and and I was the first one for for a year and there was um i had um a huge um project um like the 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 finale and then i invited taishan oh, wow. um, to come to germany to do this finale and and also we did some trio stuff so yeah. that was the first thing here because then i felt you know that's 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 Taishon worthy, a huge finale, yeah, and, yeah. You know, like, like not not at the festival per se, but but like you know, like the the whole village was there, and uh, because Merce is a kind of a village, but then also, um, as you as you maybe know, it's it's kind of like the festival is a really great festival, like yeah, I know, yeah, and for the music, right? So so we played there and enjoyed, and it was uh, super great, and and that's when I decided to to actually record. Uh, and and I did that 2009. I went to New York because I had a, a uh, residency um, at up, upstate New York at Omai, which was mm -hmm. which is super great. Like for I think it's six weeks or I don't know maybe seven weeks. Oh wow, super! Well, like uh, 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 musicians from like everywhere. You should apply because it's super cool. Um, oh, so okay. from from like the whole world, they are just just. Uh, coming there and you can do whatever you want. And and I, uh, like over there also, James Ilbenfritz was there with whom I'm working today, still today. And and um, so that was really great. And uh, uh, the, the residents per se, or, or the, the circumstances there were really great. You just, you know, you just went and you could do whatever you wanted. Yeah. But what I was about to say is that was, um, that was also, we were, we were kind of um, rehearsing with Taishan and I, but I think I'm mistaken. I did rec the recording. I think I, I did it later. I came back to New York and did the recording. Yeah. So that was that's the story. The story <laughs> and then yeah, you know yeah. where we came. I I, I uh, kept on coming back and yeah. Yeah, but uh, how was the first reaction for of New York for you? Like, do you remember? Like, oh my god, just as 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 yours. I, I was blown away. I mean, you yeah. you like uh, because I that was kind of. Uh, uh, late in my life, um, I, 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 I didn't, um, I wasn't there like uh, when I was a teenager or something. Yeah. So it was the first thing, um, actually, when I kind of, uh, it was a, a, a stop before I went to Art Oma, yeah, that was the first time. And I, w I was just, you know, kind of like you have all these movie yeah. images and then you're just walking around and yeah. go like, what is going on here? That's, I was, I was walking hour, for hours and hours just yeah. to, you know, to, to just sink in and, and like, like a sponge in the city. So um, yeah, it was amazing. And I, I don't even mean like, you know, uh, um, listening to music because that was an extra special yeah. thing. Just yeah, walking yeah, sure. around, like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, of course, people people say a city is overrated sometimes, I guess. But for me, it was like I I was blown away. Yeah, you were. It's it's really it's yeah. I mean, it's something it's um, something something a little <laughs> something special. Plus, for us, you know, all this all this uh, spaces and places where where our like our history sort yeah. of uh, yeah. was happening. So that's an extra bonus. And then. If you go to all the places where contemporary music is is happening, that's that's an extra extra bonus. Yeah. So everything was great. <laughs> yeah, amazing. But uh, also like, a little expensive, but great. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a different story. <laughs> but yeah. like the, the first New York record you did was the New York Five, right? Then with Florian Weber. No, the first New York record was uh, was a trio with Taishan and Thomas Morgan. Uh, quite simply, that ah, was okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, it was uh, the very first one. So, so uh, how did that happen to to play with Thomas? Also, I mean, like because he's such a great player. Heavens, heavens! It was uh, absolutely great. And and uh, um, I think I asked Taishan. I I remember I, I asked Taishan. You know, I, I would like to to do a record and mm -hmm. and which bass player are you do you love? Because and he played I, with I, Thomas. I, mean, yeah. I knew some of those, right? But I, I mean, it's always you know. I, I trust, of course, recommendations 
yeah. if John was to recommend. And of course, Tyshawn, uh, anyway. So I, I think I asked him who's, uh, who will be like the best person for him. Yeah. And he suggested Thomas. And then we rehearsed a little and then record. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and when did you then meet Chris Trudini? Because with Chris, I think then you have a really long-standing relationship yeah. musical, like playing, he's on three of your records, I think. And, yes, 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 absolutely. And he well, really uh, blends with you, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is, uh, that was super funny because uh, the tour I wanted to do after this very first recording, uh, quite simply, um, uh, Thomas couldn't do it, so I, I knew I had to sub him. And yeah. uh, that's when Taishan again recommended Chris. Chris, yeah. And so we met on on tour directly, and then yeah, so and then the the musical rela relation. He is a dear friend of mine. That kind of um, you know uh, continued. So yeah, yeah, that was like we 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 actually met all again in Germany for the tour, kind of yeah. European tour, and and uh, yeah, yeah, and we play <laughs> play. We met uh, directly for the performances. Yeah, yeah. Well, beautiful. But uh, but for the last New York trio, you, you then have Gerald on drums, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also a sub situation because um, um, Jared was subbing Taishan. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think for the quintet. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And then, and then it was kind of clear because Taishan has really a lot, 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 lots and lots and lots and lots and to do, and you know, with this, with this professorship and so on yeah. and so forth, and. Um, and it was kind of uh, um, he wanted to focus on on his on his stuff. We didn't really, you know, I didn't I didn't ask him, and then he went like, "Oh, I wanted to focus on on my stuff." Yeah, yeah sure. Kind of became clear, and Jared with Jared it was so great. Yeah, Jared. So was I was like, "Yeah, let's." Uh, I mean, the not to say, of course, nobody is really interchangeable, but um, uh, with a but but kind of. It, it came super naturally, you know, that we were on tour and then, yeah. and then, duh, 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 and then I was thinking about material anyways, and then, you know, and then, yeah, and then Jared was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's an amazing drummer. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, all these groups that you work with, like the New York Trio, let's say, uh, are these working groups as well? I mean, like, would you call them? I mean, did you tour a lot with these groups also, or? I did, I, I did always kind of it, I like after the recording, a tour. I mean, the yeah. last, um, we were supposed to be touring with, with, a, with a trio slash quartet uh, in, in um, uh, now in, in uh, I think in, in for October, I think. And it didn't, of course, it didn't happen. Yeah. So uh, yeah, well, I mean, um, working bands, not not in terms of that I I'm playing uh, like with one specific setup for yeah. longer time, a longer time period, let's say like ten years, but still like the people and you know. So I'd say it's not so much just project, it's something in between maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, you know that that you have you have like. Uh, the thing begins and then there is the recording and then there is there is like yeah. a phase of the tour and then maybe another thing where personnel is not um is is, uh, is uh, the same or or maybe just slightly changed so yeah i mean in germany it's the same uh, you know i have um i i had a discipline quarter right um and and i do work with those guys um yeah. but not necessarily in that setup so yeah yeah but uh, no i'm asking because like uh, you know, I've been listening to your music for quite some time now, and it seems like you you use the players. I mean, like of course you have Jonathan Finlayson or Chris Tardini or all these guys who were part of this scene that started, let's say, around Steve Lehman 10, 15 years ago. I don't know, but like, uh, how do you? I wanted to ask you, how do you compose? Do you like compose music when you did compose and when you still do? Do you compose with those players in your mind, or you just? start writing music or do you know you'll have let's say does it make a difference i'll put it like that if you have ralph olazy or, or jonathan finlayson on trumpet i mean how do you compose mm, absolutely uh yeah well uh, first of all it does make a difference of course um i think it's kind of a mixture but um uh first and foremost i do have uh, like i know for which setup i'm composing okay. so yeah. it's gonna be a trio or now it was a sextet 
um, and 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 so there are specific sounds I have uh, in mind. But then automatically, because I almost by then I kind of know um, which people are gonna uh, uh, actually play. So I do specifically compose also for for like the the artistic uh, personalities because. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, as as it was with Alexander. Actually, yeah. it was it was the same. Um, that's good too. Um, because I I, um, I I think that's that that goes hand in hand, kind of. Because um, you know um, uh, there are of course you can you can just do blah 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 and string quartet, but but I'm I'm more of a person who then knows who's gonna kind of lead maybe the string quartet yeah. or or. Yeah, yeah. or now I did the Beethoven thing was with two uh, vibraphone players, and I did I did know for instance Christopher Dell I do exactly know kind of yeah. you know what his what his artistic personality is and and I did know also Evie Philippou what what she's playing or how how she's playing so that that's kind of like that's super important because then I knew how so which yeah. sound we're gonna use yada 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 the same with the trombone player I know Shannon I was working with Shannon so I kind of know where her her what what she how to say where she shine I mean yeah, she yeah, shines sure. everywhere no, but you know yeah. what I mean <laughs> yeah. so um so it's a mixture I guess there are like um, but but like first there is like the sound okay like trio or quartet or yada 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 and then the personnel and then you know yeah. develops but um um yeah I, I I think it's it's a mixture but of course I do absolutely cater to to people's you know uh, kind of <sighs> strength no but yeah, yeah definitely yeah <laughs> but, but you know what i mean because because yeah. like you you know when you play with them or even if you're just listening to somebody whom you were not playing uh with yet you you kind of know how how he yeah. or she sounds and and you know you know that's that's the thing yeah so, and, and maybe even this thing is this what, what is drawing you from uh you know to the person actually yeah. so so that's so. Of course, I, I try to use it um, uh, consciously and, of course, unconsciously, but but very consciously also. Yeah. No, no, it makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, no, yeah, because yeah. You know, it's, you, you'll write different if you have Tony Malaby or if you have Donny McCaslin, let's say, because absolutely, absolutely, that's absolutely. what I, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but uh, yeah. do you have like a, a specific routine of writing, daily routine? Like you know, so, so some musicians have like this going on, like. You know, they write down like small blah, 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 snippet idea, put it in the map or whatever, save it in a folder. Or, uh, or, or do you like when, once you know the project is happening, uh, you start from scratch? Like, okay, and, and how do you write? Do you write on piano or do you start with saxophone? Or uh, it's, it depends. Both actually. Oh, okay. I do both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, also it depends. I mean, the thing is nowadays I kind of. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit a, like, you know, I suffer a lot during writing. <laughs> I go like, ah! <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, mostly it's it's self-inflicted, right? But, but... Yeah. Uh, no, but yeah, well, we're, yeah, everyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and um, it, it actually depends. As I said, nowadays, I kind of like to have, like, an idea before... Yeah. I develop an idea before I really, really start writing. So why do I do this piece of music? Um, like, what's the what's the gist of it? Like, what do I want to, you yeah. know, to, to kind of, um, what do I want to transport? Can you say that? Yeah, in English? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Via the what music, mean, like, yeah. what's the what's the what's the composition uh, composition idea. technique? Yeah. Like the composing technique, actually, I'm gonna use for that. And 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 so I kind of need like a um, nucleus, so so I can develop it from yeah. there. And and this takes place before I really kind of uh, uh, you know do the real sounds and pitches yeah. and sonorities. So, um, but that changed actually. Before that, I I was just writing because you know I had an idea and I wrote yeah. away. And 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 today, especially like for the quartet, or for, for also for Alexander, for the dual CD, or for the for the sextet, um, that that was really like I I have to have like a main 
like a theme or, yeah, or like, yeah, like, yeah. A, like a, a large idea. So why, like, why is it yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, I don't know, uh, like 15 years ago, I just like, yeah, ballet, let's do a ballet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and this doesn't work anymore, which is okay, because I mean, we wrote so much stuff. So, yeah. I mean, you know, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's perfectly okay uh, to kind of uh, question and, and second guess uh, uh, myself and to go like, okay, so what yeah, do you sense. want to do, kind of do with it? Like, wh 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 why? Yeah, Does yeah. the world need another yada yada yada? So, and then I come to the conclusion: yes, the world does need another piece of whatever I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm writing. And sometimes I dwell on that question for weeks. <laughs> yeah, no. And for me, like the process, I'm not like I I uh, I kind of need to be not in 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 like in, at my home. I I really can kind of focus better oh, if I okay. I have. I just kind of do for myself some small residencies where I just go to my family. Oh, you guys go like on vacation. Nice. Do you need somebody to watch the house? Or, you know. That's, a good, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they go like, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's uh, because I, I, I can, I just can focus better. But yeah. that's, you know, I mean, if I, if I can't do that, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, of course, I'm doing it at home. I mean, everybody does, right? So, yeah, so, sure. But that's my, I, I, I just kind of notice that if I'm, if I'm somewhere else, I kind of can focus yeah, a bit. You can, yeah. Yeah. But uh, speaking of your composition, like I, I wanted to ask you also, like your music is so rhythmical, also, right? And uh, and rhythmically complicated. As I follow it, like, uh, where does this element come from, the rhythm part? That's a good question, actually. I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. Um, I think, well, I mean, um, I pretty much think this is actually Elvin Jones. Because oh, okay. I, I, I was, I, I was listening to those records uh, of the quartet and and later on of course uh, um with Wayne Shorter um mm -hmm. or or Miles Davis the late quintet um Tony Williams blah, blah, blah. Tony, yeah. yeah and and um also Brentford Marsalis um and I think I think th this was like not consciously but this was like this this rhythmical richness Elvin's rhythmical richness I think that was the that laid the ground for that, yeah. for all that. And, but like the re kind of um, really the, um, the outcome, um, how it is now, uh, I think that's actually listen to Steve Lehman's music. Yeah, you he know. changed quite for all of us. I think the world. Yeah, he did. Man, yeah. he's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so I think those those things and and uh yeah uh, st uh yeah steve coleman with yeah, my shot of steve, course yeah, steve was also, yeah. um both steves <laughs> yeah so, exactly. so I, I kind of but i think the the um the fascination or or uh, anyway but but um more or more of this complexity in 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 elvin's playing yeah. you know i think that kind of laid the basis for for just you know, being more open to that, or being more open and fascinated by this uh, this uh, parameter of music, yeah. Rhythm, okay. yeah. No, yeah. The, 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 just just one more question about your composition. It's yeah. like I also noticed, like you have this thin line between improvisation and composition, or improvised and true composed. And how do you envision that in a tune? Do you leave it open, or do you like write down on paper the sections? Okay, we're gonna go there, or how does this happen with you? Because you, you know, I think you blend so well impro, and it's like Alexander and all these guys uh, do that as well. You know, improvise and compose stuff. How do you do that in your music? Well, well, it also depends. Sometimes I have a a um, an, an, uh, specific idea that the improvised section, um, kind of the solo section, will be in a in a specific uh, at a specific point in the tune. Yeah. 
sometimes I kind of leave it open and and it it um it develops through playing actually yeah. through the performing, but of course for the recording kind of or through rehearsing. But um, it's it, maybe it's both because uh, uh, sometimes I just go like uh, this is the main idea and then we we kind of try to play with it and then something happens mm -hmm. or not, but mo mostly it does. So <laughs> yay! <laughs> you really love it. And, uh, <laughs> so um, uh, you know, sometimes those those things are in, in like in the wrong on, um, at the wrong place. Yeah. So we I kind of then change it uh, after Houston. So I think it's 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 kind of like the, the general idea is, is there, and then um, I try to navigate it. Um, you know, when we actually play it, um, and sometimes it's it's just in you know uh, when I write it down, it's absolutely clear that's the that's the thing. Yeah. Sometimes it just opens up as as you I mean yeah. know or did did yourself. I'm sure many times it just opens up at a certain point during playing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at some point you just go like we can open it up or we don't even talk about it. We just yeah. open it up. Yeah. And um, I mean the. I, I am actually fascinated by by um, by by this this you know this blur. Um, is it composed? Is yeah, it composed? I love the two. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that I mean, that's yeah. that's it, like the days of head solo 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 head. Those are over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, but I mean that that's also that's okay, and and as everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know so um yeah so that's that's it depends on 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 the tune but mostly i kind of have an and kind of a general oh, yeah. idea yeah. um should it be floaty is it is it like are there just some 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 um, uh, things uh written down and then we kind of work yeah. around yeah. it or is it kind of specific so yeah 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 Interesting, but uh, Angelica, not not to take too much of your time. I just, uh, no, just uh, you could, I'm, I'm good. I was I was just asking yesterday because I didn't know how to. I'm 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 absolutely yeah. No. <laughs> just I just wanted to ask you about two two European projects I saw you did. I, I know the trio with uh, Simone Zanchini and Stefano Seni. I love those two guys, and I wanted first to ask you about this Italian trio. How this this one happen? And because it sounds completely different than the New York stuff you do, it has. It still has this improvised moment, but it's more uh, folkish. It will be a wrong word, but if you know what I mean, it's uh, it's a Absolutely different vibe accordion. because of the accordion. And how did this trio happen, actually? That was um, I had a composition commission for the Alto Adige Festival mm -hmm. oh, um, in oh the year uh, two thousand and I think twelve. 13, 12, I, I think it was 12. And um, and I was thinking about, you know, the, the setup and and then um, uh, as, as I'm sure you, you also do, um, the, I was just thinking about, okay, so I, I wanted to, of course, uh, uh, um, work with Italian musicians. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the festival is there and I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a perfect opportunity because I never kind of really did that. Mm -hmm. and and so i was like yeah nice and uh, then i was searching and you know asking people and and just because i didn't didn't really know enough about the scene or the players yeah. um yeah. so i i asked a lot of people and and you know was listening to a lot of stuff and at some point i i kind of uh, i was um thinking about i never ever worked with an accordion with a FISA, right? I like never. And I was like, that's actually a really good idea to kind yeah. of go this kind of abstract way, but then sometimes even uh, not. And and then um, a friend of mine recommended uh, Simone. Yeah. Um, and uh, he does uh, lots of also electronics and he's also like, like you know, he's classically trained, but then he does a lot of free improv. Improvising, and, yeah. And, yeah. Right. So that's uh, that that was per a perfect choice. And, and he again recommended Stefano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and we met the first time we met uh, uh, at the for, for the rehearsals and the um, premiere at the festival and um, we did a recording and I remember yeah. we were talking 
Uh, we did the recording of, of the premiere, but like nothing ah, you okay. can really uh-huh. use, right? And Rodo, we were talking and Simona was, yeah, you know, we should, we should do something with the recording. I was like, nah, that's like the sound wasn't good enough. Yeah. You know, and then, but then we decided or, or um, that we're going to record a proper CD. And then we went on tour with that. So yeah, yeah, crazy guys, crazy yeah, guys. Really cool players. <laughs> but that, you nice know, as, as you said, that's that's kind of like sometimes Folkishi. Uh, Simone is writing, and me, uh, we both writing. The premiere was just with the um, with my uh, with with my material mm-hmm. then, and um, so yeah, I kind of I I was. Also, like what we were talking uh, previously about, um, you know, the sound was was very, um, very uh, um, kind of putting the, the ideas into my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, play, uh, Simon is playing actually because I didn't like I didn't want like he doesn't do like the normal FISA sound, yeah. right? And and so that kind of opened up and and yeah and then and then it went on yeah great. No, <laughs> it's a nice context because it's without drums, you know. I love that. Absolutely, it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. The, the, I just want to go there a little bit north now, nor, nor, northwest, and ask you about this other Icelandic trio. I, I listened to Broken Cycle, and and yes. I'm such a huge fan of Hilmar Jensen since he played with Jim Black and you know his group and uh, I love those songs and I wanted to ask you how did this trio with Scott McLemore and Hilmar happen because it's yeah. you know quite unusual to play without the bass I, I played in a bassless trio for 12 years so I, I love this sound without the bass and yeah I ask you how did you come up with this band or idea well the thing is you know that uh, just as you said it's it's also it's just possible with certain players Right, it yeah. isn't possible like with like with just mm, guitar and horn and yeah, yeah. Uh, so so the the you know the uh, uh, players have to have a a certain sound um, uh, available and well the trio that that is a funny story because uh, I I was uh, doing uh, at a Merse festival I was uh, um, curating a series the morning sessions uh-huh. and um, and Scott was was there. Uh, playing, we didn't play together, but he was playing there like with, with like a, a huge big band, some sort of a big band, and they were uh, the the persons and Scott McLemore were playing there, and we 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 were talking, and and you know, and 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 he kind of we were basically just talking, and then we met again in in at a, at a fair in Bremen, jazz mm-hmm. yeah. uh, jazz ethnic, right, and he was like, I listened to your record, that's great, let's do a trio. I was like. Yeah, of course, <laughs> because I knew, you know, I, I knew his, his playing anyway, yeah. so I, I, that was, it's great, I admire uh, him as a musician anyway, and, and then, um, and then he, he, he just said, him out, I was like, yeah, <laughs> of course, so, uh, so that's, that's the thing, how it happened, so we kind of met again, again in Germany, oh, and then, okay. and then we were recording. I, we we did a, a, a another recording recently, but now I, I actually have to ask because everybody was like, you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 great because uh, Hilmar um, and and Scott they 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 click so well together. Yeah. Yeah. And also Hilmar, he just has the, all the sounds to do, you know, in a bassless trio. Just. Yeah. Oh, so it's it's great, and it's again a totally different um, a sound and totally diff- different circumstance. Yeah. So I I really love that one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Doctor Jazz.